Okay, thank you, thank you, Venkat. Well, hello everybody. Thank you for joining this webinar. Uh, actually, good morning for the people in San Francisco and good afternoon for, for the rest of the people in Europe, if we have attendees from Europe. So I will start with a short introduction of uh, myself. Uh, so I'm a hands-on software architect with uh, around 15 years of experience in working in uh, various uh, industries, both software and hardware industries. Um, lately, I have been uh, mostly focused on Kubernetes and cloud native applications, uh, mostly on software architecture side, but also as a hands-on developer. Uh, uh, as the Venkat explained uh, uh, briefly, uh, Kubu is a company that I have co-founded and I'm also a CTO of this company. So we are focused on private Kubernetes cloud and infrastructure, and uh, this is actually uh, uh, one of uh, the reasons why we are involved in this uh, project, uh, the, this uh, Pepper project, uh, because we are really, really um, focused on, uh, on, uh, on computation and uh, trying to uh, yeah, to uh, uh, yeah, trying to provide uh, a private and community uh, computation uh, services. Obecto is a boutique software company with 12 years of history. And actually, uh, I'm also a software consultant in Obecto. And uh, Pepper as a framework originated from our, one of our internal projects that is a crypto asset double trading platform. And the, the last company that I want to mention is a non-profit uh, organization called Comrand Cooperative. That is, uh, is a democratic organization uh, of software developers and innovation builders. Uh, and our key projects are actually Bitonomy and Signet, which are blockchain-based projects for creating, uh, on one hand, decentralized organizations, and then on the other hand, a platform for community computing for running uh, out and our algorithms. So uh, actually, um, we, we tried to implement those projects with existing blockchain technologies, uh, but unfortunately, they were not very suitable for our use cases. And this is one of the reasons why we decided to uh, to actually use Pepper and uh, Upper Creef uh, blockchain technology to, to really deliver the promises of those uh, projects to the general public. You can find more about those projects in, uh, in our website. Um, so now, because the, the topic of the webinar is quite broad, uh, I'm going to first start with a slow introduction to reactive programming. Um, so. Um, what is practical programming? Basically, it's a programming of uh, using asynchronous data streams. So the idea here is that uh, is that instead of uh, imper imperatively uh, uh, programming your algorithm, you're actually declaratively specifying the actual data flow. And uh, as the data comes from uh, from from front of the channels, it's being delegated to to the, to the listeners and uh, Basically, it's an event-driven uh, paradigm. Um, reactive systems, uh, as, uh, as a system being built using reactive programming uh, model, are usually systems that are responsive, resilient, elastic, and message-driven. So uh, this is uh, kind of a, a, a essential uh, essential ideas of reactive systems, and uh, this is why the, the 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 reactive systems are usually built based on reactive streams. So reactive streams basically are asynchronous streams for asynchronous processing that are providing non-blocking back pressure and data locality. So the second uh, topic that, that we would like to, to discuss is uh, the topic for uh, serverless computing. So it's uh, serverless computing. It's a very um, it's a yeah it's a a very popular paradigm, especially in the in the in the era of, of quantum computation, and uh, the the idea here is that instead of managing your underlying resources and your underlying execution model, uh, you're you're basically relying of, uh, of some sort of a platform or a cloud provider to to manage those underlying resources. Essential uh, characteristic of serverless computation is actually scaling is ability to scale down your uh, computation resources uh, to zero. Uh, also, since uh, uh, another, another very important aspect of, uh, of uh, uh, another very important aspect of service computation is the ability to actually manage your uh, your, your state. 
And uh, usually the, the state management external, is externalized from the functions into some sort of a data platform. And um, the other aspect of serverless computation is that it's uh, usually event driven. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, this, this means basically that, that, that your computation is triggered on certain events like uh, HTTP triggers or timer events or some events in, uh, uh, that are happening in, uh, uh, in, the, in the message queues for certain business. Um, basically, because of those facts, uh, the serverless computation and the reactive streams can be, uh, can be combined in a very natural way. Um, and uh, by combining those, uh, those two uh, paradigms, uh, you, can, uh, you can implement a variety of architectural patterns, like, for example, you can use them for ETL pipelines, you can uh, have a boot agent systems, or uh, you can use a virtual actor uh, architectures. And uh, in essence, uh, actually, we, what we are doing in Pepper is exactly trying to combine those two paradigms into a single programming model. And uh, now I can uh, uh, here briefly show you from a logical perspective uh, what, uh, what uh, one uh, application that is uh, combining these two paradigms can look like. So the idea is that uh, you, you start with some uh, consumers which are actually streams that, uh, that you're engaging for uh, 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 by your um, end user application or end user logic. And as soon as a uh, stream is engaged, uh, uh, basically some of, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the inputs of the stream can be other streams, which are then engaged as well. And uh, by using this chain, we can, uh, we can engage the, 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 the first type of streams which, uh, uh, very, uh, which usually are called the generators. The generator streams, usually they uh, listen for a certain data in, in, uh, or, or are being triggered by certain data events in, in the cloud. For example, this could be uh, a Kafka topics or it could be some other triggers. Uh, or they can uh, occasionally, by some timer event, check uh, for a certain data in a database or a file system. And uh, by, uh, by, using, uh, yeah, by, uh, by harvesting those kind of data, they can emit uh, the data to the streams that are listening them. And uh, here comes the, uh, another interesting concept that, uh, uh, that is very useful for those kind of application. And it's, uh, it's actually uh, the ability to process and transform the data. And by, um, by combining serverless computation and reactive streams, you can also uh, process the data uh, by, uh, by using workers that, uh, that can utilize the data locality features and uh, basically process the data without uh, uh, yeah, in, in, uh, on the node that actually holds the data. Uh, so this is uh, something that, that, uh, that uh, is, uh, is also well known as a, as a MapReduce a technique and algorithm. Uh, another technique that, uh, that here we can, uh, we can see is that, uh, for example, if you have uh, uh, two streams that, uh, that are basically listening to the same stream, uh, this, uh, this means that, uh, that uh, a single stream can emit data to two or, or more, more streams, which is a, a technique called fan out. Uh, the processing streams, uh, they can, they can uh, actually process the data by using workers uh, on the nodes that hold the data. But another thing that, that uh, can, can happen is if the processor streams do some sort of an aggregation, then the data locality should not be, uh, should, uh, should not be, um, uh, um, yeah, basically, the data, the, the data workers should not work on the on the nodes that hold the the output of the in, uh, of the streams, but sometimes can uh, can uh, can work on a on a specific node that aggregates the data. Uh, so it's kind of a very very simple high level uh, streaming graph that can be created with uh, with this kind of a framework. So. Now I'd like to, uh, to show actually how you can build such kind of system by using uh, Apache Ignite. Um, so the first, uh, the first topic is uh, actually how you can create reactive streams by using Apache Ignite. Uh, Apache Ignite provides data grid and service grid that are uh, from the Melton building box, uh, quite useful for, uh, for implementing distributed reactive streams. 
Uh, however, there are a few things that have to be uh, implemented as ex extensions. So the idea that we use in Pepper is that we have a, a, a Ignite cache that holds all of the all of descriptive data for the for the streams, which means uh, which are the parameters for the streams, which are the input streams, uh, and any any sort of other configuration constants. So um, by using continuous queries, we can uh, we can actually uh, observe the, the changes into the streaming graph and uh, basically create a, a stream object uh, when a when a specific uh, change occurs. And this is a process that we call stream orchestration. So another important aspect is that uh, every stream consists of two uh, of two building blocks. The first one is a Ignite cache that holds the output of the stream. And the second one is a Ignite service that is actually doing the, the serverless computation uh, 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 that is associated with the with the actual reactive stream. So the way that we are uh, implementing this in Apache Ignite is that uh, when uh, when a stream is created, uh, uh, basically uh, the the stream is uh, indirectly indirectly deploying a service into the Apache Ignite service grid, and then it starts observing uh, changes into the into the cache by using continuous queries. Uh, if uh, the actual stream has an input to another stream, then the service is engaging this stream, and uh, the same process applies to uh, to, the, to the stream that is being engaged. It uh, it uh, fire ups uh, the, the actual ignite service that uh, that is doing the processing code and, and and start observing the changes in the output of the service. Then those changes are being uh, uh, are basically being uh, uh, forwarded to the uh, to the service that is uh, in, uh, that is listening for the for the streams and input. Uh, in addition to the stream orchestration, another thing that we are is very important uh, uh, extension that, uh, that that we are implementing on top of Ignite service deployment is, uh, is the ability to uh, to actually uh, uh, shut down services that are not uh, associated with strings uh, with streams that are being actively listened. So. Um, Another thing is uh, how we are actually implementing the back pressure. This is something that can be achieved by uh, utilizing uh, Ignite mechanisms for cache washing, uh, cache blocking, and also configuration of, of uh, max async current operations. Uh, they're they're quite quite useful for implementing back pressure in those cases. And uh, the other thing is that um, uh, the Apache Ignite provides a lot of mechanisms for uh, data locality, so we can uh, configure. Uh, the services, the service deployment to to happen either into the uh, to, 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 with, with different uh, affinity uh, options uh, in configurations. Like for example, uh, if uh, if we want to have a service that is collocated with uh, with, the, uh, with with the aggregated data of, of its state, then we can configure it to uh, to be uh, to have affinity with the stream with the stream key. Uh, otherwise. We can have workers that are uh, configured to to have affinity with uh, basically with the with the cache uh, with caches cache items the cache keys that are outputted from the generator service. Um, another thing is that um, is that when the, the the computational graph can be mutated during the computation, and this can also happen seamlessly uh, because we can uh, pretty much uh, make change to the computational graph. Uh, directly from the from the services. Uh, now the question is how we can actually integrate uh, uh, the, uh, this idea uh, for uh, for for computation using Apache Ignite with uh, different serverless frameworks. Uh, so the, the idea here is, uh, is, uh, is 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 quite uh, simple. Um, I mean the problem is that the Ignite by by default. Uh, uh, have to be extended in order to be integrated to the serverless frameworks, and uh, the, the reason for the reason for this is uh, is because usually you would like to uh, to have a variety of languages and a variety of uh, of platforms uh, that uh, that you want to use uh, as as part of the, your serverless uh, service application, and uh, it it would be uh, very difficult, especially combined with the ability to scale down to zero. The actual functions and containers to actually collocate a, a full Ignite node inside your 
uh, serverless application. And um, for this reason, what we are what we're actually doing is that you know, instead of using uh, uh, so we, we are using almost the same model, but but instead of uh, actually um, doing the, the actual computation inside the Ignite cluster using Ignite services, what we're doing is that we're delegating this computation to, to happen into the serverless framework. For, for Pepper, uh, we are uh, currently using uh, Azure functions, uh, but other serverless frameworks can work in a, in a similar way. So how we are doing the, the actual delegation? So we are utilizing uh, basically two, uh, two functionalities of Ignite. The first one is that uh, we can, instead of using continuous queries, we can simply use cache events. And by uh, using those cache events, we can, uh, we can actually work, uh, 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 com uh, combine the events with the stream orchestration and uh, notify the, the, this particular serverless functions for the, for the changes and for the, for the different actions that are happening in the streaming graph. But then the serverless framework can use uh, the Ignite team plan to uh, to actually um, uh, yeah, to actually uh, obtain the changes of the uh, uh, in, in the data grid and uh, or to uh, actually uh, output the specific uh, items uh, 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 in, the, in the in the stream output. So. Uh, the, the, the team client is something that uh, is uh, provided for a variety of languages by, by Ignite, but the notification pipe is something that we have uh, to implement uh, very careful in its implementation uh, because it has to support uh, back pressure and to be fully asynchronous. Uh, for Perper here, we are using, uh, uh, we are using uh, uh, .NET Core pipes. Um, and uh, and uh, is, uh, 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 and the uh, CP socket underlying then. Um, so here I would like to, to show you uh, quickly how such kind of system can be uh, operated. Uh, so what what we are using what we're, what we are typically using in in Perper is uh, Kubernetes. Uh, but of course, this can be applied for other uh, container orchestration frameworks. But in our case, uh, what we have is uh, we have a couple of uh, couple of bots, uh, and there are a couple of deployment deployment models actually that you can apply uh, to to Piper. So here I'm actually showing in combination of two deployment models. So the first one is is that uh, you have a uh, um, multiple bots that are running uh, Ignite uh, that are running uh, Ignite. Uh, uh, Ignite server nodes, and they are forming a single Apache Ignite cluster. Then you can uh, use sidecars to actually deploy the, the, the different functions containers and uh, use the, contain, the inter, 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 internal pod container networking mechanism to, uh, for the notification pipes. And uh, the good thing about this model is that uh, here you can very easily implement the data locality without, uh, uh, without working with the, with, the actual, with the actual Kubernetes environment. Uh, because you can rely on uh, on, uh, uh, on the on the locality of the of the of the pods. So, in other words, uh, when you uh, when a certain, uh, for example, when a certain stream outputs its data on on this node, then uh, the the Ignite service can be uh, uh, the Ignite service that is deployed with affinity to this cache key can simply make a local host connection. Uh, to make sure that it, it, it engages serverless functions that is collocated uh, with, with data. Uh, however, there is another uh, approach uh, that is a bit more uh, suitable. Um, I mean, the problem of, of this approach, of course, is that uh, scaling down to zero has to be implemented with the custom Kubernetes operator. Um, um, however, if you want to use existing Kubernetes operators like uh, Kubernetes, uh, like Kedo, for implementing event-driven auto scaling, this is also something that uh, that can be uh, easily done, uh, and uh, uh, this is also something that we are uh, also planning to contribute as an open source uh, as an open source uh, project is to basically extend the CAD operator to be aware of the uh, of the of the uh, data thing, uh, of, the, of the data locality into data into the cluster. Uh, but here again, the the uh, the principle is similar. Um, the, the only difference is that the connection between the uh, 
uh, serverless containers and the actual ignite nodes is not happening through uh, to the container to the uh, inter, uh, to the containers network inside the pod, but is actually using the Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes networking. Okay. Um, so now, actually, uh, oops, I would like to, uh, to quickly show you uh, a, a quick, uh, uh, yeah, a quick demo of of source code. And, and how such kind of uh, system uh, lo looks like. So this is uh, the, the Parker uh, GitHub repo, and here we have a, a, a sample application that shows uh, most of the of the features. So uh, currently we are we are we are having samples for, uh, for only for C sharp, uh, and the reason for this is because uh, C sharp eight it has a, a very good uh, uh, idiomatic support for React and streams that was recently added. And uh, the, the way that you can express uh, such kind of computation, is, uh, you can express such kind of computation in a very concise way. Uh, of, of course, uh, a, a similar a similar uh, approach can be implemented in other languages, uh, like, languages like like Java, and using a Java asynchronous programming model uh, with the active streams. Um, but uh, the samples that I'm going to show you are, are using C sharp. So here the idea is that um, pretty much you have uh, a, a single a single entry point of your React application that is a setting of the streaming graph, and, um, and and here we have three streams like a generator stream that is uh, actually uh, uh, is uh, is uh, just a stream that generates a, a specific uh, like a like just a bunch of uh, integers. From uh, from one to forty, and um, the the interesting thing about this generator is that it's not actually gen its output is not just generating the integers, but uh, but, but actually it generates uh, uh, it, it it generates uh, a series of other streams that are actually generating the the, the integers. So it's a very important uh, uh, feature of of um, Pepper is that you can have higher order streams. So you can have streams that are outputting streams. So you, you can have a computational graph uh, that is uh, actually creating a, a multiple computational subgraphs. So, uh, so, so the actual generation, as you can see, is, is here. Uh, we, we, we tried to, uh, to be very idiomatic in the way that we are actually implementing the, the whole programming model. So, uh, all, all the interactions with with Ignite are happening on a framework level. So, from a, from a developer perspective, developer is not dealing with uh, with specifics of, 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 of Ignite. Uh, and, and and here, basically, this is the generator. It outputs uh, uh, certain data. Uh, and, and and here you can see this is the generator of generators that is uh, actually outputting uh, a generator streams. Uh, and uh, it's also here we are also showing you how, how you can use a, a state, a, a durable state that allows you to uh, to, to persist uh, to certain information. And if the, the function gets uh, gets shut down, and then uh, if if it, if it's, uh, if uh, if it starts again, it will continue from from the from the last state. Um, okay, and. Um, Um, and uh, here we have uh, like a sample processor. Uh, the way that you uh, basically can uh, we can either uh, when you're uh, creating the computational graph, you can either subscribe to a specific stream explicitly, or if you don't subscribe for a stream, it's, it's going to be passed as a parameter. Um, so here we are, we're doing the, the subscription, and here we are passing it as a parameter. Uh, so let me let me now show you the. The example. So the, the uh, as, as, it, as it was shown in the architecture diagrams, there are actually two parts of the of the paper of, uh, of the paper framework. The first one is what we call paper fabric, which is the, the ignite part of it, and then we have paper functions, which is the uh, the the, yeah, the extension of the of the serverless function runtime called the Azure functions. That is uh, which is basically um, uh, doing the, the the serverless part. So, uh, 
for uh, for development purposes, what what usually you can do is you can run uh, the Apple Fabric as, as Docker container, and um, and then you can use the the default uh, Azure Function Developer tools to basically run the the actual function that you will connect to the container. So now here you can see it, it, it locates all the streams and one by one it starts engaging them. Um, oops. Ah, sorry, <laughs> really sort of a, uh, okay, strange error. Um, uh, yeah, it's usually with the demo is is very okay. Uh, oops. Okay. Yeah. yeah, let's see if now it's going to work. Okay, yeah, now it's working. So we can see the generator, uh, it, uh, yeah, it's, it slowly generates uh, all the numbers and uh, also you can, here you can see that a number of new generators are being generated. Um, scroll too much. Um, so uh, you can like uh, you, uh, you can also uh, use the buying and, uh, and and those kinds of, uh, of things as well um, with with with, with, the, with uh, this framework. So now let me go back to the presentation. Okay, so uh, now I'd like to, uh, to quickly explain you actually uh, how we have uh, used this framework to, to basically create the Apple blockchain project. So uh, every blockchain uh, project has uh, a few, um, a few uh, core uh, building blocks. So the first one uh, is uh, the consensus sense of the blockchain. It's uh, really the heart of, of, of every blockchain and it is uh, what, uh, what actually guarantees the, the, the security and the consistency of the network. So for AppleCrypt, what we are using is a combination of uh, King of the Hill uh, uh, algorithm for, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very specific proof of work algorithm for, uh, for selecting, uh, selecting validators and a snowball uh, which is a curing uh, algorithm for uh, for reaching consensus for uh, certain events uh, in, in inside inside the blockchain. Um, the second building block of every blockchain is uh, the de is the decentralized network, uh, which is a uh, really a distributed network of uh, physical nodes, usually uh, run by a community. And uh, a physical node could be just a simple machine, or it could be a, a entire cluster. Uh, so uh, what we are using for Apple Creef is that we are utilizing a Kubernetes and Pepper uh, for the for the physical nodes and the network the network between the different physical nodes uh, we are we are relying on IPFS as a storage and networking layer uh, as a programming the, the third building block of every blockchain is a programming model so uh, the programming model that we are using in Apple Creef is a multi agent system based model and um, we are also trying to support uh, uh, both passive active and uh, cognitive agents. Um, so here, um, why we are using actually Piper for building uh, appropriate blockchain. So the first, the first thing is that uh, uh, by uh, when we were working in, uh, on Piper in back to what we figured out is that uh, is that the, the the computational platform is is quite general and quite generic. 
And uh, what we were thinking about is that, uh, like, if we add, uh, I mean, this platform can be used for, for many business applications and also can be used for, uh, you know, variety of use cases. But what we uh, started thinking about is that, that maybe if we uh, simply add consensus, uh, consensus mechanism on top of this platform, then we can, we can use it for decentralized networks. And um, because of all the problems that we have uh, in, in, in the Comrade with, with existing blockchain uh, technologies, and especially with the developer productivity that you can achieve on those, uh, on, on those existing technologies, what we decided is that we can, we can actually build a, a really a blockchain that is focused on developer productivity and can allow us to, uh, to really deliver those projects. And uh, this is one of the reasons why we select Pepper is that it's a, it's a, it's a single uh, platform that can easily scale from a single machine to multiple machine. It, it also have a reactive, uh, reactive it can be used for building reactive systems. And uh, in essence, uh, every blockchain can be, can be viewed as a, as a reactive system because it's, it's kind of message driven system. Uh, and more specifically, it can be viewed as a, as a multi-agent uh, system. And for Aquagrip, also the applications that we envision to be built on top of Aquagrip are also multi-agent uh, applications. And uh, the, the third thing, which is very important thing, is that uh, is that we can uh, use the same technology that we use for building the blockchain. We can use the same technology actually to create a, a huge uh, simulation environment where we can validate all of the of the theoretical properties of, of our consensus and to, and to be sure that it's uh, it, that it's uh, consistent and secure. Um, and uh, the last thing that I want to, uh, to show you is uh, kind of a very high level overview of, of, of how uh, appropriate architecture is, uh, is actually uh, is created. So we have a decentralized network as a, as a base for, uh, for the storage and for the networking. And then on top of it, we have a multiple Kubernetes cluster that are running multiple Ignite nodes. And every Ignite node is running the uh, the whole consensus and all of the virtual nodes required for the for the blockchain and all of the user code. And um, yeah, so this is kind of a very high level overview of the of the architecture. Um, and uh, yeah, so so now I can um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah if you if you like you can uh, check out the. Uh, the, the, the GitHub uh, repositories of those two projects, and uh, and basically, uh, uh, yeah, and see the details, the technical details around them. And, and now uh, it's time to ask for, for any questions. Um, I was wondering, um, how did you um, pick sort of Apache Ignite as part of this uh, framework? Did you have previous experience with Ignite, or did you look at other sort of uh, great computing solutions. What was the process like? Well, uh, the process was uh, um, so uh, so everything started with uh, actually with uh, uh, with uh, with, uh, with the efforts for creating uh, a data processing platform. So in the beginning, what we were that that that, uh, that is stream based and also has data locality. So uh, we were looking at uh, several other options, like for example, using Spark with Kafka. Uh, or uh, or uh, some, some sort of a combination of, of different technologies, uh, but the, the problem was that uh, we were we, we wanted to have a single like a very simple architecture with a with a single platform that is uh, that is really uh, solving all the aspects. And one thing that that we were uh, that we, we, we kind of uh, disliked of the other approaches was that there was a lot of system integrations, a lot of complexity into the operations of multiple systems. And then, actually, and then uh, Ignite was one of the platforms that we. Uh, it was kind of a relatively uh, new platform, um, in, uh, and we, we kind of start start exploring it. And, and what we liked about it is it's kind of a Swiss knife approach where you have a lot of a lot of uh, utilities that you can really combine to to achieve uh, what you want and, and still have a single platform for, for operations. Um, and uh, then we started. Uh, Playing with Ignite, uh, and uh, the first um, the first prototypes were uh, were using uh, uh, Java and uh, and uh, yeah, Java and Kotlin, and together with Ignite, and we were we, we tried to it was uh, kind of a, uh, without the serverless aspect, so we, we really tried to have only the stream processing inside Ignite. 
but then we uh, we started uh, thinking about okay uh, all of these data processing can help us very seamlessly in Ignite but uh, why don't we use the same platform also for training machine learning models and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, other 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 processing activities. So we started adding more and more languages. Like for example, we started uh, uh, trying to to add C sharp and then uh, Python. Uh, and then we figure out that that maybe it would be it would be better to actually uh, try to to really use some sort of a serverless uh, framework that is that has multiple language support and try to integrate with Ignite. And this is how we came up with with this idea of combining Ignite with uh, Azure Functions and or, or, or any other serverless framework uh, in, in this way. Awesome, mm -hmm. great. Um, another question is, uh, what are the use cases for Purper beyond what you cover? Yeah, so the, the, the use cases uh, for, for Purper that we are currently uh, uh, we're currently uh, kind of uh, exploring and also using it for there are kind of a Two, two major, uh, like I mean, in addition to the blockchain, there are two major uh, use cases. Like the first one is for really uh, doing data pipelines and machine learning pipelines, and this is actually what we are uh, using it uh, inside the back to uh, for for this uh, algo trading platform that is uh, that we are really uh, kind of harvesting data from uh, different crypto markets, then uh, processing this data, and then. Uh, uh, doing uh, doing uh, uh, training different machine learning models and uh, back testing those models and for all of this we are using a single platform that is that is Pepper. Uh, the other use case that we are also exploring is uh, using it for a more traditional business applications like for example CQRS applications uh, because uh, the whole idea of of, of, uh, of practice streams it, it plays very well with event sourcing and CQRS also plays very well with event sourcing and, and, and and if you if you have a secure S application uh, that is that is using event sourcing, you can really have the the, the whole uh, the whole backend of your your system entirely running on on, on Pepper and uh, and Apache Ignite. So those are the major use cases that we are currently uh, exploring. Nice, that that's good to know. Um, we have a couple of questions from Swapnam. Um, so one is about Kubernetes. How mm -hmm. is Ignite managed internally? Are you using um, some custom layer for that? Uh, so yeah. So for uh, so for uh, well, yeah. That's that's a. Let me go back to to the diagram maybe. Uh, so that's uh, yeah, that's very uh, very good question. So uh, currently, uh, for for example, for Applebee's project, uh, what we are what we are really having is this. Uh, uh, we are trying to, to to have this model over uh, this model here with the complicated containers, and here. Uh, so running Ignite in uh, in Kubernetes is uh, it's uh, it's relatively straightforward. Um, you, you just need to, to make sure that the, that the nodes can can discover with, uh, with Kubernetes services. But uh, for 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 the for, uh, for running the whole pepper in Ignite, uh, what we are actually uh, what you have to do is you have to have an operator that makes sure uh, that makes sure that uh, that it restarts in the right order the pods when a new uh, when a new version of the function is being pushed. Uh, but something that we are actually planning to do. Is uh, is really planning to, to use the CAD operator and uh, and, and, and kind of uh, have a support for Pepper, uh, so we can more seamlessly uh, uh, publish uh, 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 serverless applications uh, on Kubernetes. Uh, and but this is something that is still uh, that we are still working on, but uh, relatively soon we're going to open source it as well. Uh, so Ignite on Kubernetes is relatively straightforward. However, this idea of of, of collocating the, the serverless execution with the Ignite nodes is something that it, that that requires a Kubernetes operator. Nice. All right. Um, thank you. I guess one question is, um, you know, wh why another blockchain? What what are the advantages of um, Apocrypt that you talked about? Um, yeah. Well. Uh, yeah, that's that's a very very good question. So um, the so the, the main reason of of, uh, of actually having another blockchain is 
is that, like the first the first one is that it's really the developer productivity. So we wanted to to have a have a, a blockchain that that uh, uh, that is designed around that the, the, the first focus uh, in the in the design of the blockchain is uh, is developer productivity to be able to use really a, a general technologies like uh, like Kubernetes and, and C sharp and Python general languages as well to really create uh, create a very uh, kind of a very uh, 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 a very developer friendly uh, framework and environment for multi agent systems uh, the second thing uh, is, is is really about the scalability so um, for example uh, many of the many of the uh, and the scalability and decentralization like for example many there are many other projects like for example else that are really focused on uh, on uh, on a kind of a Developer productivity and, uh, and enterprise and uh, using enterprise technologies for building blockchains, but but they're kind of uh, they have problems with this decentralization. So usually they have a limited or fixed number of of nodes that are validating the network. And we want to, to have a to have a blockchain that is like fully uh, uh, that, that is fully decentralized, like Ethereum. Um, another thing is that uh, it was very important for us to have. Uh, blockchain that, that that supports free user transactions because for the use cases that we are we are building like for example um uh, the autonomy use case uh, for building uh, decentralized organiza organizations usually the, the the members of those organizations they have to vote and in order to to be able to to keep uh to implement whole functionality on the blockchain you have to have uh, free user transactions otherwise the users have to pay for uh, uh for uh uh, for using uh, the the for, for using the the, the action. I mean for participating in, into the decentralized organization and this might be uh, a stopper for uh, for them to to be yeah, to participate in the democracy in this organization. Uh, so these are just a few of the the, the highlights that, that 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 we have uh, as a as a as major highlights. But like, if you if you want to, to have more details on this, I, I encourage uh, uh, everybody to to, to visit apocryph.network and uh, see the, the the more more details around uh, around the blockchain aspect of of, uh, of the solution. Awesome, yeah. Um, and maybe one more question. Um, this is about again blockchain. So why did you decide to use blockchain over a uh, centralized database? Uh, what added value do the validators bring and how do you make sure that the data is really immutable if i understand correctly it's yeah. not um totally yeah, proof yeah, of work a, consensus. yeah yes i, I think I, I understand the question okay so this one is also a very good question uh, so that what 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 the idea here so basically we are using ipfs as a decentralized storage and uh, so so the 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 blockchain or the single truth of the blockchain actually is stored on IPFS, and uh, it's, it's stored on IPFS using a, yeah, like a, like the, the standard approach of, of, of linked list of hashes. And uh, the reason of, of using Ignite actually is that uh, Ignite is, is using a, is, is storing a copy of the blockchain in memory, or actually the, a, a copy of the specific of the. Okay, maybe there, there, is, there is one more detail that I have to add here. So uh, the idea of Procrit is that every multi-agent application, it runs on a separate chain. So uh, Apocryph actually, it's a, it's a network of, of multiple chains. Every application runs on a separate chain and uh, there is a main chain that, uh, that actually, uh, yeah, that, 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 uh, that holds the, 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 the truth and also the economic incentives. So for every chain, uh, so basically for every application, the chain is also stored uh, uh, in, into, in, in, into Ignite. So all the interactions in, inside a single Ignite cluster uh, are happening only in memory without any interactions with IPFS. So uh, the, the, the idea is that we're using actually Ignite as a as kind of a centralized cache that allows us to, to, to have the performance and all the all the reactive, reactive programming model. But uh, when a consensus is reached and the, the consensus actually is it's a message driven operation, when a consensus is reached, everything is then stored on IPFS storage there. So uh, so this is uh, yeah, so this, this is like like the, the answer for, for the question why, why we are using this. And, and then the, the second uh, I think the, the second part of the question is 
uh, is uh, uh, how we are uh, actually in, in, uh, ensuring the all the, the cryptography around the blockchain. So the idea is that within a single physical node, uh, basically all the virtual nodes that are running inside the single physical node, they have trust uh, within each other. So all the cryptography uh, happens when when the data and uh, when the when the messages actually exits the, the single the single physical node or the single Kubernetes cluster. Um, and uh, this is uh, this is when they go either try PFS or uh, or or uh, or uh, go through throughout the nodes using the the gossip protocols. Um, so the, the the purpose of Ignite here is really to to, to allow us to have a highly scalable uh, in memory layer that allows us to, uh, to 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 really do all the the calculations with the consensus and the uh, and, uh, and, and, and and the and, and the, and, and the uh, agent execution within a single, only within a single uh, physical node. That can be a single machine or can be a cluster of multiple machines. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, and maybe like final comment, like, so can I host Purper apps on AWS or do I need to use Azure for this? Uh, you can host them on AWS. Uh, so basically, everything that uh, the, the way that we run Azure functions is uh, so we you, we run Azure functions entirely on Kubernetes, so there are no dependencies to to the Azure cloud. So you can uh, you can host host them on AWS or any other Kubernetes uh, compliant service provider. Awesome. All right. So that was uh, that was great. Thanks for. Um those uh, those answers. Uh, I also posted a link to, I think, apocryph.network on the chat window. Yes. So if anybody wants to take a look, you know, feel free to browse around. Um, yeah, I see a couple of more questions. We do have a couple of minutes. But let's see if we can cover those. Um, so one of the thing was performance. Um, you know, by using in-memory uh, grid computing, did you um, were you able to see any real time? Um, like, do you have any uh, architecture performance results you can share? Um, well, uh, I mean, not 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 yet, not yet. But this is something that we are well, maybe just let me. So, so here in this test harness, uh, this is what we are going to be one of the the. Uh, I mean, we have some, done some internal testing, but we have nothing that is suitable for sharing. But uh, as, as part of this test harness, actually, what we are trying to do is to, we are trying to simulate a network of 10,000 virtual nodes running on Pepper. And uh, in addition to the to the characteristics related with the with the blockchain aspect of, of the technology, we are also going to collect a lot of metrics around the Pepper aspect of the technology, so the the, the, the performance and the uh, and uh, yeah, the throughput uh, and yeah, all, all of the other characteristics. So as part of, 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 of this test harness, we're also going to publish some results uh, for what we have been able to achieve with Ignite uh, and Azure Functions as well. But, but currently, we, 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 we don't have such a metric yet. All right, so that brings us to the end of the Q&A section of this webinar. Um, Brandon, did you have any closing comments before we sign off? Uh, well, uh, the only thing is uh, is that uh, I would like to thank everybody for uh, for for their time, and uh, also I would like to encourage uh, uh, anybody if, uh, if if they can uh, visit our GitHub repos uh, and or our Discord server and really uh, talk more about uh, the the topic. And we are also going to post regular updates on the progress that we have. It, it, it's uh, still early days for Parker and Upgrade, but uh, we are actively working on those. And uh, more updates are going to uh, to come as soon. All right. Uh, thanks, Benemir. Th thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.